seek the approval of the dissidents of Hong Kong. <laughs> Singapore is not the West. One value which does not fit Singapore is the theory that the press is the fourth estate. This is your life and mine. I've spent a whole lifetime building this. And as long as I'm in charge, nobody's going to knock it down. You see, the whole of my adult life It was a very peaceful, quiet, orderly place. No demonstrations, no strikes, everybody living a very simple life under the British. And uh, everybody thought they were going to be here for the next thousand years. Suddenly the Japanese came in, very cruel people. I did not know that you have to bow deeply. <laughs> so I just passed him quietly. He called me back. Kneel down. So I knelt down. And he took his boots and did that to me. They chose mostly big people, big size, because they are... You're big? Yeah, I was big then. For, for the Chinese, for Chinese, I was big at that time. So they said, go there. So I said, I have left my clothes behind. I did not feel good. So they allowed me to go back. So I stayed for two days. Second time I went out, they had changed people, and they let me through. Well, I was lucky. I was lucky. Those who went on that lorry were taken to the beach and shot. It would have been me. Yeah. Just like a lottery. What have we done to deserve this? Surely we must be in charge of our own lives. And that is the beginning of politics. The first time I came out of the tube station at Trafalgar Square, I was very impressed. There was a bundle of newspapers for sale and a box. Nobody there. And you can take the newspaper and put your coins in or change. Change notes and take coins. I said this is really a civilized society. I think first the shock of uh, a different life. Having to do things for myself and having to meet people whom I don't know and who did not necessarily welcome me, especially in London. I'm a Chinese, they are not Chinese. They think they are superior. I don't think I'm inferior, I really it like that. Uh -huh. <laughs> but it, it changed you a lot. Did you have another uh, because of discrimination? You develop your own ideas. Yes, of course. You have your own uh, pride. Oh, uh -huh. That's very necessary. You work on incentives, but then they tax you and then they redistribute. Uh, help you in education, in free health, free spectacles, free dentures. They thought that this would be a, a humane, a great society. We decided that the British were not superior to us. We can look after ourselves. What they can do, given time, we will do. There is no reason why they should govern us. We can do it, and better. We had no choice. We had no choice. They had captured newspapers, Chinese newspapers, Chinese clan associations. Even the Chamber of Commerce were afraid of them. The schools, the management committees were afraid of them. 
the old boys association, musical associations, oh, they were everywhere. Well, that is the trouble, you see. We were young and innocent. We did not know how dangerous it was. We thought, no, no, mind. we will be able to fight our way out. But you ask me to do it again, I will not do it. It was very dangerous. Could easily have been captured by them, totally. Merdeka! Lagi sekali yang bersemangat, Merdeka! Very few people will believe me. In 1959, when I won the election, I knew we were going to have trouble with the communists. I was quite apprehensive. I was not elated, I was not joyous or joyful because I knew a big fight was coming. They wanted a communist Malaya. We wanted a non-communist Malaya. We could see that Singapore as a small economy, a small island, would have a very tough time to survive on its own. You needed a hinterland. This was the center. So how can we survive without the body? We let it go on, doesn't do any harm, provided they don't take up stones and sticks and guns. I say rally around and keep these evil forces you see, they are so ashamed of themselves, they have switched the light off. Look at that. They are cowards, that's what they are. Cowards. They switched the lights off. And believe you me, we are going to win. If they intend to do us in, they must be prepared to kill us. If they try to kill us, then we must fight them. And we will fight them to the death. When I met the plan, the communist representative in Beijing in 1994 after the battle is over he told me I saved your life so I said thank you so he, wants, he wanted me to let him come back without questioning I said no you did your calculations. I did my calculations. Merdeka Malaysia! I, Lee Kuan Yew, Prime Minister of Singapore, do hereby proclaim and declare on behalf of the people of Singapore that as from today, the 16th of September, 1963, Singapore shall forever be a part of the sovereign, democratic, and independent state of Malaysia. They want a Malay Malaysia, where the Malays are on top, in charge of everything. And you may be allowed to get some business. We wanted, gradually, not immediately, a Malaysian Malaysia, where as citizens, we share the burden and the rewards. A peaceful, happy, prosperous, united Malaysia is only possible if we keep Singapore the center of Malaysia in peace, keep Singapore happy, and make the people feel that they are wanted, not stepchildren or stepbrothers, but one in the family, and a very important member of the family. People do not expect fundamental issues like what kind of a nation we are wanting to build. Is this a Malaysian nation? and How are we going to get there to be resolved in one hour and ten minutes? Do you think that that can be resolved in one hour and ten minutes? It took 20 months off of Malaysia to bring these issues to the surface. And we can resolve these things in one hour and, 20, and ten minutes? I mean, this is fantastic. 